Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play the Legend of Heroes Trails of Azure. Last time we started up Chapter 1, and uh, we got some quests. We're not going to be doing those quests today because there's tons of people that you can go around and talk to to raise hidden bonding points, as well as get some various items and just kind of build up the scenery and everything. Yeah, lots of little kind of, I call these like almost side quests. No, he wasn't slacking off of Mishalom. Yeah, he was just getting some more training, you know? Okay. Hey, and for talking to him, we get the Moon Enjoying Muffin. Well, yeah, it's a muffin. It looks great. Okay, will do. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of food in this game, but hey, if I can get it for free, I'm all about it. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, there's also some hidden treasures that we can find as well. So let's go ahead and do that over here in the apartment building. Let's head on down over here and then go this way. Yeah, it's nice and hidden that way. And what do we have? What do we have? Ooh, the flexible coat, which I believe I already bought last time, but hey, it's fair. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Yeah, go on this way. As far as talking to all the other NPCs that are wandering around Crossbell, I'm going to be doing all that in a special bonus episode. Here I'm getting the main important cutscenes. Basically if the screen kind of fades to black or kind of gets close up or something like that, then that to me counts as a cutscene. And I'm going to be putting that in the main Let's Play. Everybody else is just going to be stuck in bonus, bonus videos or whatever. Here we can go ahead and buy a Crossbell Times. Awesome. There we go. I'll be showing that during the end slate of today's video. Now, here there are some decorations that you can purchase. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be buying all of these. It might. It's not that big of a deal. To me, they're kind of wastes of money, to be honest with you. But, eh, whatever. They just kind of show off stuff in people's rooms and everything. If you really want me to do it, I'll do it. But to me, it's, again, kind of a waste of money. Because it really doesn't do anything, it's just purely aesthetic. It gives no bonuses other than seeing literally a mirror hanging on her wall. Like, who really cares? And they get very expensive, too. So this is Lawyer Ian. He helps us out with the law and all that. You would think that the police office would have, like, its own lawyers, you know? Yeah, Mr. Beardy Bear, or Barry McBearface, as I like to call him. Yeah, someone who breaks the law wants to work with someone who knows the law and enforces that law. That makes a whole lot of sense. Really, we kind of already know who you are. But, you know, this is... I mean, honestly, you could probably play this game by itself without having played Zero first. Because it really does give a good... It really does introduce everybody very well, I've got to say. Well, of course. That's what he's here for. He has no other work to do at all besides what the police want him to do. Okay, so that's everything that we can do over here in West Street. Uh, let's move on. Let's go over towards the residential street where the really wealthy live. And over here is the Hayworth residence, which is Renee's parents, her whole family and everything. Let's go talk to them. Yep. How are y'all doing? Oh, good. Yeah, something really important, actually. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I don't think that they know that Renee is actually their daughter. I don't think that they ever told him that. Yeah, we know exactly who she is, but she kind of went back home. Tied by fate's one way to put it. Yep, 
idea, you probably shouldn't. They'd probably be better off not knowing. It would just hurt them way too much to know that, you know, their daughter's alive and she wants nothing to do with them. In fact, she wanted to kill them. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty deep right there. Okay, uh, Ellie's house is over here as well. There's not really a, what I would call a cutscene here, but I figured I'd show it anyway. Basically, if you talk to the maid, you get more of an in-depth scene. Yeah, hey there. Oh. You would think that the relaxing part would be whenever no one's home and you don't really have to do much of anything. Well, yeah. All maids in these games do. I mean, have you guys met Sharon? Come on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, good. That means that they're worried about you. Maybe they'll come home and actually visit you. Okay. Here. Oh, we can't actually warp inside of a uh, house? That's very unfortunate. Oh, well, let's see. The next place I want to go to is the Entertainment District. There we are. That's the casino. You can go in there and gamble and stuff if you want to. I really don't care about all that. But I do want to go inside of the theater and see how Ilya and Rixie is doing. See what's going on. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. These people really are very worried about etiquette. Like, you really don't see that in other JRPGs. People just come barging in, and then they break everything in sight, steal your life savings. But here, everybody's like, should we really be coming in here? I don't know. We should go ahead and make formal introductions and bow and scrape and all that. It's actually kind of refreshing, now that I really think about it. As opposed to, you know, Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, like I said, where you just barge in. Well, yeah. We kind of saved their lives, too. We pretty much saved everybody's lives around here, actually. Okay, and for coming in here and we get to see this scene, this raises hidden bonding points with Rixia. So, yeah, that's kind of nice. Soli is their kind of adopted tomboy or something. They're, they found her on the streets and she was, like, she was stealing from them, but then they took her in because she's a girl. If... If it was a boy, they would have, you know, strung her up and hung her and thrown her into jail, but it was a girl. So she gets off scot-free, and she gets to be an apprentice. That's the way that things work in these games. Yeah, so, uh, how are y'all doing? Oh, yeah, Ilya... She kind of has a crush on Lloyd, but everybody kind of has a crush on Lloyd. <laughs> Personally, I'd go for Rixia myself. A dirty old man. She's kind of a young woman, but sure, it fits. Yeah. How would you know that? Are you stalking her? Huh. Oh. <laughs> I wonder whenever Randy and Tio are going to come back. When are we going to get our dedicated magic user back? 
Well, Ellie works decently enough. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh... This is the game's way of saying, Hey, remember me? I was a really minor character back in Zero, but she'll gain more prominence here in, um, in Azure. Also, I heard that she actually has a decent-sized role in Cold Steel 4, but on I don't know anything about what's going on in Cold Steel 4, or really even Cold Steel 3. I'm trying my best to avoid spoilers until those are finally translated and released. <laughs> yeah, it was her fault. She was the burglar. Really? Seriously? Yeah, it's my fault. Blame the victim. Sure. <laughs> you were trying to capture a burglar. What do you want? My god, put him in a chokehold. Do whatever you need to do. I'm sure you will. Oh. I wonder if we're gonna get to see another performance. That'd be really cool. I really liked the performance back in Zero. It was pretty cool. she was going around as, like, yin or something for the last couple of months. Hmm. Yeah, Rixia kind of moonlights as an assassin. Nobody's really supposed to know that, but we do. And if you think that this is spoilers, believe me, it's not. We learned all this stuff in Zero, so don't worry about it. I don't want to hear you calling out spoilers inside the comment section, because it's not! Go back and watch Zero if you think that it is. Okay, let's get on out of here. And now the next place that I want to head on over to is the police station. And I want to talk to Fran, who's Noel's sister. Hey there. But she is. What's the problem? Uh, yeah, Fran basically works as the, um, the person who gives you the support requests, and then she gives you the rewards for those requests as well. Oh, well, yeah. We're not going to talk to this Emma person today. We'll start quests next time. Okay. Hey there. Oh. Yeah, you mean you actually had to get up off your ass and do something? What a concept! <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Okay, so that's all that I want to do here at the police station right now, just get that little scene right there. And now the next place I want to go to is the IBC building. There's nothing in the waterfront district, so I figured I'd see you guys, the, you know, me just kind of running through it. But over here, we can talk to this guy, 
and we get a little scene here, as well as an item. Oh, yeah, actually I do. I believe that we rescued him, yeah, back at the, uh, at the hospital. Oh, no problem. Ooh, and we get the Celestial Balm. Oh. Okay. Well, thanks. Okay, let's move on and talk to this person as well. Did you guys, did you guys update that or something? Oh. Okay. Hey, hey, nice. Basically what you can do is you can convert all the sepith that you get um, from monsters into mirror, mira, which you can use to purchase, you know, items essentially gold in this game. And you can do that at most shops, but if you come to the bank and you do it, you actually get like a 10% higher exchange rate. So it's worth it. Um, coming on over here to do that. Okay. Yeah, basically, she, it's just given, the game is just telling you what I just told you, so, yeah. Okay, again, I want to skip the Waterfront District and just head straight over to East Street. And there's only really one thing that I want to do here, which is stop inside the Bracer Guild. Oh, it's Michael. Hey there. Good to see you again. Oh wow, they actually gave him a, a, a portrait. Oh, wow, you have a really good build. Man. Not really a fan of your hair, but hey. Yeah, you look well as like understatement of the year. You look pretty damn good. <laughs> Yeah, we have to go around and introduce ourselves to everyone, it seems. I kind of wonder if the reason why Wazzy and Michael, or why Wazzy was like, hey, I don't really need to introduce myself to you, is because I wonder if Michael and Wazzy had like a, a thing going on, if you catch my drift. Like, my gator is going off 100% right now whenever these two are talking. Okay, let's go upstairs and talk to some of the bracers as well. Hey there. Yeah, good to see you guys. Oh, really? We really should be full-fledged right now. I mean, the special support section did a hell of a lot more work than any other section in the police department. We should be, like, leading the police department. It's really ridiculous that we're not, to be quite honest with you. Okay, so anyway, next thing that I want to do is head downtown. And in here, I just want to check out a couple of places. Let's see, let's go inside this exchange shop. Yeah, you know, God forbid an adult be in charge of the store. Let's use child labor. That's the ticket. Okay. Yeah, basically what happens here is you can exchange regular items for, like, upgraded items. Um, it happens for items, for accessories, for courts. 
but it costs a lot of U materials and various other rare items to do it, so that's not really going to be something that we're going to do until much later on in the game. This is the headquarters of the Testaments, where we first met Wazzy way back in Zero. Oh, a real business. Okay. <laughs> now this guy, Abbas, was Wazzy's bodyguard back in Zero. So it looks like he's kind of leading the gang right here. Or maybe they turn this place straight. People have to move on from life. You can't just keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Okay. We're still welcoming people? We're still, like, giving all these introductions? It does get tiresome hearing the same things over and over and over again as far as everyone having to get introduced to each other over and over and over again. Yeah, good to see you too. How you doing? Are you up? Oh. Yeah, this shop, essentially you use your current weapons as well as U materials, and then you combine them and it upgrades your weapon for you. The more powerful the weapon that you want, the more U materials that you will need. So basically what I like to do is hoard U materials up till the very end of the game, to like the final dungeon, and then create um, the ultimate weapons for everyone. And then, yeah, this is just giving you the tutorial about how to do it. But we're not going to do that till much, much, much later in the game, so don't worry about it. I don't like to waste team materials on easy things and stuff like that. So there's one more place that I want to go to before we um, finish off. Hey there. Yeah, we kind of rescued you there too. We rescued everyone. Oh. <laughs> Spanked with a bat or beaten with a bat? What about Mr. Wald? Yeah, what happened to him? What? Uh-oh. Yikes. Oh no. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wait, if he's not here, then where is he? Oh. Yikes. Wow, he really does seem pissed, man. Yeah, let's get on out of here. I'm done. And we're gonna start up all of our side quests next time on Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Azure. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.